Welcome to Pratham Science Academy classes and we are on to the introductory part of exercise 6.2 in which we are going to discuss the increasing and the decreasing functions and how to evaluate them. So <clears throat> to understand increasing and the decreasing functions, let's consider this function f of x is equal to x square and the graph of this function is a parabola like this. Now, this fun, uh, this graph, if we consider the values to the right of the origin, let's say the values are zero. So value of the function at zero. So value of the function at zero is zero square, which is zero. And similarly, the value of the function at half is one by four value of the function at one is one square which is one so we just have to replace the value of x and uh, you will get the value of the function at that point okay now let's consider just these two values uh, and let's focus on the right of the origin so let's focus on this part that is in the first quadrant and uh, in this case as we move from left that is, if we, as we move from left towards the right. And so height of this graph goes on increasing continuously. So the value of the function at zero is zero and value of the function at one is, value of the function at one is one. And the value of the function at two is, let's say it's four. So it's one, two, three, and four. So this graph goes on increasing continuously as the value of the x goes on increasing. So let's say if we have two values x1 and x2 and x1 is less than x2. So value of the function at x1 is also less than the value of the function at x2. So that means, so this is uh, what we have analyzed for the increasing function. And similarly, if we uh, consider the left of origin of this graph so let's consider the graph to the left of the origin so value of the function at minus one is one and as the value of x decreases the value of the function increases okay so value of the function it increases so in this case we know that this minus two is less than minus one but the value of the function at minus 2 is greater than value of the function at 1. So value of the function at two minus 2 is 4, whereas the value of the function at negative 1 is 1. So in this case, let's say if these are the two values x1 and x2 and x, x1 is less than x2, then value of the function at x1 is greater than value of the function at x2. So this shows, so we will, in this case, as we move towards from the left towards the origin, the height of the graph, it moves, it continuously decreases. So we say that the function is decreasing for the numbers, for, for the real numbers for x is less than zero. Similarly, the function as we move from left towards the right, uh, in the right of the origin of the graph, the height of the graph it continues increasingly uh, uh, continuously increases and we say the function is increasing for the real numbers x is less than zero so what we have understood here is that if x1 is less than x2 and value of the function is also less than the value value of the function at x1 is also less than the value of the function at x2 then the fun then the graph is and this we say this uh, function is an increasing function or the graph height of the graph continuously increases the function is said to be increasing in this case it's an increasing function but if the value of x1 is less than x2 but the value of the function at x1 is greater than the value of the function at x2 we say that the function is uh, decreasing so this is what we have analyzed that a function is said to be increasing on an interval if x1 let there be two points in the open interval x1 and such that x1 is less than x2 and the value of the function 
at x1 is less than the value of the function at x2, we say that the function is increasing. And if x1 is less than the, less than x2, but the value of the function at x1 is greater than the value of the function at x2, we say that the function is decreasing. Okay, now, okay, and if the uh, function gives us the value constant, we say that it's a constant function. We all know that. And <clears throat> We will also try to, uh, so this is the graph of the strictly increasing function. And the strictly increasing function is when we, when the value of the function at x1 is less than the value of the function at x2. So we say that the function is strictly increasing. But if, if, if at x1, it's less than or equal to the value of the function at x2. So we say that uh, it's uh, an increasing function. So in this case, it's a strictly increasing function. This is a strictly decreasing function. And this is a graph for the neither increasing nor decreasing. It's a constant function. And uh, let's try to show this function by this definition we have learned for the increasing and the decreasing function, how we will show that this function is increasing or not. So our function f of x f of x is equal to 7x minus 3 is increasing on R. How we are going to show that using the analytical uh, the comparison that we have learned for the uh, increasing and the decreasing functions. So for this, uh, For this question, let's try to solve this and using the definition of the increasing and the decreasing functions, how we are going to show that f of x is equal to 7x minus 3 is increasing on r. So, <clears throat> okay, so by using the definitions of the increasing and the decreasing functions, we have to show that this function, which is given by f of x is equal to 7, x minus 3 is increasing on r. And for that, let's consider x1 and x2, both the real numbers, and such that x1 is less than x2. Okay, now if x1 is less than x2, so if we multiply both these numbers with 7, so 7x1 will also be less than 7x2. And if we subtract the equal quantities, that is minus 3 on both sides, still it will uh, 7x1 minus 3, the inequality sign will remain the same. So 7x minus 3 is actually f of x1. So this is 7x minus 3 is f of functions value at x1 and its functions value at x2. So when we know that if x1 is less than x2, and if this implies f functions value at x1 is also less than the functions value at x2, so that means function is strictly increasing for all real numbers. So that's how we can use the definitions of the increasing and decreasing functions to prove that whether function is increasing or decreasing. And uh, we can also use the first derivative test. So that was the first method and this is the second method. So this was the first method to show whether the function is increasing or decreasing and we can also use the first derivative test just that is to just to find out the first order derivative and if the function is continuous in a closed interval and differentiable in the open interval so if the differentiation of the function is greater than zero then the function is increasing if it's less than zero it's decreasing and if it's equal to zero it's a constant function so let's use this the second uh, method that is the first order derivative test to show whether the function is increasing on r or not and our function is f of x is equal to x cubed minus v x squared plus 4x. 
and let's find out its first order derivative so first order derivative is 3x square it's minus 6x plus 4 so <clears throat> and okay now this can be written as this is our first order derivative so it's 3x square is 3 fours are is 12 and can write it as the factors of 12 uh, that will give me it's 3 4 6 2 and it's 3x square minus 6x plus 4 okay I can write it as I can write it as 3x square plus 6x plus 3 plus 1 and for these three terms, three is common, so it's x square minus two x plus one plus one. Now this is a minus b the whole square, so this is a minus b the whole square plus one. Now three is greater than zero, and x minus one the whole square. Obviously, the square of anything is greater than zero. One is greater than zero, so that means this differentiation is greater than zero. So f dash x, that is the first order derivative is greater than zero, which gives us that the function is increasing. So this function is an increasing function. So that's how we can use the first order derivative test to check whether the function is increasing or decreasing, and we will solve more of these questions in exercise 6.2 so let's uh, before that uh, we can also uh, find the intervals in which the function is increasing or decreasing and let's try to solve this as well okay so for this question uh, this is an example in which this function will be divided into uh, number of disjoint intervals and we will have to find whether this function is increasing in that particular interval or not using the first order derivative test so we are going to use the first order derivative test and before we use the first order derivative test let's find out the intervals for this function and our function is f of x so f of x is 4x cubed minus 6x squared minus 72x plus 30 and now let's find out the intervals for this so first order derivative for this would be its first order derivative would be its 12 x squared minus 12x minus 72 for which 12 is common so it's 12 into x squared minus x minus 6 which gives us f dash x is equal to it's 12 i can write it at x square minus 6 okay it's 3 it's minus 3x plus 2x minus 6 which gives us x x is common so it's x minus 3 plus 2 into x minus 3 so this is equal to 12 into x minus 3 into x plus 2. So this is our first order derivative. And let's try to put it 0. So if we put it to 0, which gives us either x minus 3 is 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0. If x minus 3 is 0, that means x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 2. So our disjoint intervals for this, let's draw a number line. And if we draw a number line for this, this is our real line. And we are on the negative infinity and a positive infinity. So let's say this is negative two and three. Okay, so this function is divided into disjoint intervals negative infinity to negative 2 minus 2 to minus 3 and 3 to infinity so i'm going to so there are these the disjoint intervals so our disjoint intervals are 
So we have these disjoint intervals and disjoint intervals are negative infinity to negative 2 and it's minus 2 to minus 3 and 3 to infinity. So in these intervals we are going to check if the this function is increasing or decreasing and let me draw a table for this so we have these intervals and we will check the sign of f dash x for these intervals so sign of f dash x and then what would be the nature of function that is it whether it's increasing or decreasing so the first interval is negative infinity to negative okay negative infinity to negative two we will have to check the sign of f dash x and for this so this is positive 12 is positive number and if i put in negative here so this will give me negative and if i put in negative here let's say uh, it's negative one so negative one plus two is positive so overall i will get negative here so sign of f dash x in this case is negative it's okay so it's negative and for this okay it's not minus one here it should be uh, some value like minus three okay so this will be negative and this will also be negative and the sign of f dash it's negative negative which gives us positive so this is negative negative is positive which is greater than zero so nature of function we know that when f dash x is greater than zero that means the function is increasing so the function is increasing for the interval negative infinity to negative two let's move on to minus two two three so minus two two three and let's check the sign for this so let's consider some value between minus two and three let's consider one so one minus three is negative and one plus two is positive so this value is less than zero so it's negative and positive which is less than zero so the function is decreasing in the interval minus two to three let's move on to three to infinity and for three to infinity let's check the sign of f dash so this value is positive this value is positive and it's positive and positive so which is greater than zero so the function is increasing so it's increasing this function is increasing from three to infinity for these two intervals the function is increasing it's increasing here and increasing and for negative two to negative three the function is decreasing so that's how we can find the dis if the function is a given function by these the disjoint intervals so we will have to find the intervals in which the function is increasing and in which the function is decreasing and let's move on to the exercise where we will solve more of these questions do like share and subscribe thank you for watching